and we're standing under the uh, overhang of a uh, retail store and looking out across the parking lot you can see a beautiful uh, two or possibly even a three-story house uh, the black and white house uh, I love the looks of that house I've built one that is very similar to that in appearance and design but that's uh, this house I'm looking at is much older and it's a uh, beautiful house very well kept for its age As a matter of fact it's for sale so if somebody wants to buy a beautiful house on Hampton Street in Pickens, South Carolina there's one for sale right across from the Hardy's and if you lived in that house you can come over and get your Hardy's hamburger if you got any money as we left off in the book of James uh, in chapter 4 I didn't quite get finished there all my thoughts of chapter 4 but uh, we'll pick up in verse number uh, 17 therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him in his sin and it is so true as James is very very practical in uh, his words and his letter here uh, he, he's very down to earth we that know to do good and doeth not to him in his sin uh, we don't need a rule book to tell us do this or don't do that and the Bible is really not that type of a book the Bible has certain certain uh, do's and don'ts within it. And we've been over many of those uh, wherein we're specifically told we don't do this, this is sin, and we ought to do this, this is right before God. But uh, so many things that you could bring up, that people do bring up, and they say, well, see, the Bible doesn't specifically say that, therefore it's not sin. Well, that's not true. That's not true at all. Just because the Bible doesn't absolutely say it doesn't mean that it's not sinful and wrong. But right here, notice verse 17. To him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So this right here covers a huge category of, you might say, gray matter of life. To him that knoweth to do good, and then you don't do it, well, to him it is sin. Uh, there are all kinds of things in life that men can busy themselves in doing, for it is good. And they do good all kinds of goods. I know people who do all kinds of good deeds and good things for other people, uh, from giving of money to helping people mow the grass to uh, serving in a soup kitchen and to uh, uh, some people sing, and, uh, have singing groups. And, uh, others uh, uh, do uh, handiwork to help people. Uh, just there's unlimited amounts of good that people could busy themselves in doing to help other people. The Bible says right here though, but to him, to him that knoweth to do it, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So when it crosses your mind some something that you could do that is good in this world or to somebody, and you do it not when it's within your power to do it, the Bible is very clear, then you have sinned. And that strikes me at times, it'll strike to your heart at times, uh, when we admit to do the good that we know to do. Or perhaps the good that has came to our heart from the Lord to do, and we do it not. Well, the Bible's very clear. Uh, when those occasions occur, you have done sin and you've done wrong. Let's look on into verse uh, 1 of chapter 5. Now, he's got right here about six verses wherein he speaks to the rich people. And probably most of us uh, that that are looking at this are not rich people. I'm not. Uh, I don't think I had any rich people in my family anywhere that I knew anything about. Uh, my wife's family, I don't think there were any rich people in her family, either way that we look at it. And, uh, but right here, there is a word to the rich people. Verse 1. Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl, for your miseries that shall come upon you. So we're reading right here that rich people are not exempt from miseries. And in reading this whole context, we find that there's a judgment day coming for the rich man when his uh, riches have left from him. And that's uh, the warning that's given right here in these six verses. There is a day coming when the rich man will no longer have riches. There's a day coming when he shall be as poor as the rest of us. There's a day coming when he cannot buy this or buy that. He'll have no money. There will be times coming when those riches he got by ill-begotten means are going to come to haunt him and to be a curse unto him and shall stand up to meet him in the judgment. We're going to see this theme and these thoughts carried out in these verses. 
the Bible says, for your miseries that shall come upon you. Now, he's not talking to rich men that have done good with their monies, nor who have done good to get their monies, and who have gotten it honestly. He's, he's talking here to men who have gotten riches by ill-gotten means. Perhaps illegal, perhaps unethical, perhaps uh, for different reasons that uh, we're in that to hurt other people to get it. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. As sure as time goes on, those things are going to happen in life. Uh, the riches will be corrupted, and the garments shall be moth-eaten. Uh, that will happen as sure as the world one of these days. To the best that they've got, it's going to happen. Verse 3, your gold and silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were a fire. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. Now whether this is speaking of a man when he dies, when he faces God, and those riches flee away from him, or whether it's speaking of the day when the Lord shall return, and those riches are worth nothing when he returns. The gold and the silver begins to canker, and the rust of them speaks against the man that owned them. He says, Your flesh shall eat as it were fire. And then he said, You heap no more treasure together. And when the Lord comes back, that corrupt man who has heaped it together uh, corruptly, uh, he's through. He's through. There'll be no more of that going on. <coughs> and, uh, verse 4. <coughs> Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is, which is of you kept back by fraud. And you know that a lot of that <coughs> goes on in the world. It goes on a lot of times in America when somebody's not paid a decent wage to do something. Uh, and perhaps where uh, companies have taken advantage of the poor man. <clears throat> and I know that has gone on. I know it has. And at times, it has touched my life a time or two. Some of the times, the jobs I had to take, I got very little for and worked practically for nothing. And somebody else profited from that. Well, I was glad to get to nothing. With the very little, anyhow, that beat nothing. And, uh, and so those things go on in the world. And as you look back in history, you find that there was a lot of, uh, a lot of that that went on. Uh, there's a lot of slavery that went on in the world in the past. And there's slavery that goes on today. And not only slavery, but a lot of the countries in the world today, we call them third world countries, the people at the top have all the money, control all the money. And the people who, are, who do not have money, uh, they're the very lower class. And they, they're never going to have any chance of getting any money. They're never going to have an opportunity to do any better than what they do because the hire of their labor is kept back from them. And they're not paid a, de a, a decent wage. And they're not paid. Uh, the people who have all that money, they keep all that money. And they know those people got to eat. <clears throat> I've heard it said, uh, we just want to keep them eating. And that's what they meant by that. And uh, they too, these people are making money off the labors of the fields <coughs> and uh, their profits uh, had plenty of profits and could have paid more and did not and so it says which is of you kept back by fraud and sometimes that goes on as well fraud in the matter of uh, cheating one out of what he's worked for and america we, we're blessed we have a great country that we live in so blessed and I wish the Americans would wake up and realize what a great advantage that we have in America to live in America. What a great economic system that we have. What a great uh, government system that we have. And I deeply regret all the people who want to destroy it and take it away and say, well, we could do better. No, they can't and they won't. They'll destroy the greatest nation that's ever been upon the face of the earth if they have their way. And, uh, and so, uh, and I'm not forgiven, keep raising the uh, uh, minimum wage. All that does is increase inflation. And, and but, uh, but still, when a man's promised a dollar an hour, <coughs> he ought to be paid a dollar an hour. If he's promised five dollars an hour, he ought to be promised five dollars an hour. Most of the work that I do as a contractor is not hourly work. Uh, most of it is contract work. In other words, we, we charge a certain price to do a job. And uh, so when we do the job, we expect to be paid for that job to a certain price that we bargain for. But at times it's kept back by fraud, and I've ran into that before, false claims. But anyhow, it says here, <clears throat> these things cry, <coughs> and the cries of them which have reaped 
or enter into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. And I can imagine so many people who in this world have worked all their life and never had hardly anything. <coughs> Even some of the ancient uh, civilizations of old uh, paid very little. And uh, the Egyptians, uh, they had slavery, but also they had a working class in Egypt, which was paid very, very little. Just enough for the people to live on. And that was it. Some of the European countries have done the very same thing, have had the same kind of setup. And wherein the people who, <coughs> who were born into those classes could never get out of them just the way the system was set up. It'd take a miracle for someone to rise up out of some of those uh, countries and uh, to ever become of any wealth. I've known several people in America who have started off working with absolutely nothing, started a business with almost nothing. I know several people in America who have became worth millions because they worked and they were diligent and they worked hard. They were wise of how they spent their money and how they invested their money and have became worth quite a bit of money. And this is America. If you manage your money and you work, you could do that. But uh, one of these days, the cries of the poor people who have been defrauded, they're going to come into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. And when it does, <coughs> judgment is going to roll. Verse 5, <coughs> you have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been wanting. In other words, you've been in need of nothing. You have nourished your hearts as in the day of a slaughter. And they have lived well. They've lived very, very expensively upon the earth. They've wanted for nothing. Well, verse 6, this is going to come to an end. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. And they have done that. Uh, they have jumped on the just. They've jumped on the innocent man. And they've killed him. And at times, uh, he had no power to resist them. And they laughed at him if he tried to resist. Well, that's a bad bad uh, situation for a man to be in. And the rich people right here, which were in the world in James's day, are warned right here. And they're warned in our day for all those who read the Bible and think about it. And like I said, probably most of us and most of you who are tuning in to my YouTube uh, channel, uh, you're not really wealthy. There may be a wealthy person listening. I hope so. But uh, I expect uh, that most of you are not wealthy. And uh, and you have maybe you may have been kept down sometimes by some of these means right here that are spoken of in these six verses, and you know exactly it's a very unpleasant situation to be in when you had no chance to improve yourself, uh, and it, it can be hard. I remember my grandparents talking about the Great Depression, and what a hard time that it was to just have food on the table, and how that sometimes they were just very very happy to have some uh, gravy and a biscuit and a little hog fat to season it with. I remember them uh, describing those times when they had almost nothing to eat because of the Great Depression that had hit. Well, uh, the Lord is he's good to us and the Lord is gracious to us and He'll see us through no matter what it is. Well, my friends, I'm just about out of time for this segment. I certainly like to encourage any of you uh, to be in, all of you to be in church tomorrow this is saturday i hope that everybody will find a way to the house of the lord and uh go in to worship the lord jesus christ on sunday which is the first day of the week we this is saturday which is actually the sabbath we don't go to our churches on the sabbath day and practice and worship we can certainly do that if we chose to we're not commanded to go the first day of the week that was what the early disciples did they went to the they went together on the first day of the week. And so it has remained for uh, these centuries and a good thing. But if you, furthermore, if you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to be your Lord and Savior, you ought to do so today. Time's going to run out one day. And one day you'll go no more and you'll be just like the rich man if you die without Jesus. May God help you.